G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Gaijin have finally done it. They have finally released the matchmaker from a little bit of the pressure that has built up over time. They have finally added 12.0 to the battle rating systems. Today we're going to go over a list of proposed BR changes that Gaijin has presented via the forums. We're going to have a look at them, we're going to discuss the positives, we're also going to discuss some of the negatives, and we're just going to have a chat in general about battle rating decompression because this is a really important topic. This is one of the key issues that faces War Thunder, simply because there aren't currently enough battle ratings to adequately space most jets, and most of this comes around the sort of 9.7 and 10.0 battle ratings. So we're going to discuss them, but of course we're going to have a look at the changes. The first major change here is that basically every 11.7 is going to 12.0, and most of the 11.3s are also going to 11.7. So we're getting a general step up, so sort of decompression around that 10.7 to 11.7 battle ratings. Maybe even you could go, go as far to say as the 10.3s and the 10.0s will also be getting some relief. Now, this doesn't really address the issues that are lower in the battle ratings, where the SU-25, the A-10A early, um, and the A-5C are, but we do have a couple of key issues that are sorted out for those planes that are almost at top tier. It also makes it a little bit easier for those of you who are grinding out with the uh, premiums that have recently been bought. These are planes that do tend to suffer because of a little bit of compression, uh, but more importantly, it's the planes that sit just below them, those things like the F4E, the MiG-21 SMT, the MiG-21 MF, even the MiG-21 BIS, uh, even the F8 Crusader. Uh, we've got a couple of other planes, the 10.7, uh, the JA-35D, the uh, other planes like the F-104s and so on. There are plenty of planes now that are getting that little bit of extra breathing room, which is really, really good to see. So let's get into the list. The first one is all of the F-16s are going to 12.0. Excellent change, great start. MiG-29 also going to 12.0. The F-14A early is going from 11.3 to 11.7. Now I do have an issue with this because I believe the F-14 is the single best jet in the game, not necessarily because it has the best of one thing or the best of another, although it does have the best radar. Um, it certainly is a jack of all trades, and the jack of all trades is extremely handy in War Thunder, particularly when it comes to energy retention and low speed dogfighting. But also, very importantly, with semi active radar homing missiles, which is more pertinent to top tier. Now, the F 14 does have uh, non all aspect IR missiles, and it also does, it's not the fastest. And it's certainly not the fastest accelerating jet at top tier, but having all of those quantities in a decent amount, in my opinion, puts the F-14 at the best all-rounder, and therefore the best that sort of fits the meta of the game. Now, I have made a video on the F-14, and I would like you guys to check that out. Link will be in the uh, little pin card on the top. So... I would suggest that the F-14A should actually go to 12.0. I think it's strong enough. I think it's certainly capable enough. And worst comes to worst, if it does become power crept by future jets, you can always give it AIM-9Ls and potentially AIM-7Ms. I'm not entirely sure about that one, but I'm pretty sure that it could field AIM-7Ms if it could field AIM-7Fs. Now, the next change here is the F-4EJ Kai, which is going from 11.3 to 11.7. Um, I find that the EJ Kai is a little bit weak in terms of its flight performance, but makes up for it with those missiles, the AIM-9Ls and, of course, the AIM-7E2 dogfights. These are pretty good missiles, and, of course, it gets the radar of the F-16. So the F-16's radar is, is I would rank it a little bit higher than that of the F-4J, uh, and therefore seeing it uh, placed adequately combined with those all-aspect missiles, I think it's a really good spot for it. Although it's not going to be the most competitive thing, uh, it doesn't really change its sort of top tier combat, but it does take it away from the F-5Cs, which is a very welcome change, leaving that sort of battle rating behind to other planes that are perhaps a little bit less capable is more appropriate. Our next change is the Harrier GR7 going from 11.3 to 11.7, and I actually agree with this one because the Harrier has an absolute buttload of flares, it's also got decent turning performance, and its low altitude acceleration and turning makes it a decent plane. It's also a plane that really relies on its sort of stealthy or coming out of nowhere type gameplay, and uh, you can really play that with the AIM-9Ls, particularly with so many flares, provided that you stick low enough and get out of the way of the uh, semi-active radar homing missiles that are in, the, in play, you can actually do a fair bit of damage. The next change 
is the F4F for Germany, which is actually going down. Now, I don't know how I feel about this because I believe that the F4F, which is the one that is in the tech tree, it's got flares, it's got nine Js, um, and it's also got, I believe, the Agile Eagle upgrade, which makes it a really, really good turner. It's also very, very lightweight compared to the other Phantoms. It's, it's got no uh, big Americans with their, you know, hamburger habits. So you don't really have that uh, sort of weighed down aspect of the flying. So you can consider it to be somewhat of a side grade to the MiG-21 SMT. But at the same time, I believe that the M9Js are a lot stronger. I also believe the Vulcan is a lot stronger. So I'm very on the fence about this one. But you know what? 10.7 is good enough, to be honest, because the mediocre flight performance will compensate for that incredible missile and gunplay. Our next change here is the uh, SU-17M2 going down from 11.0 to 10.7. I tentatively agree with this one because it's not a very good plane. I mean, it's it's got great flight performance, but it is more akin to the MiG-21 SMT and MF. So I think that it's a fine change. And of course, it is a ground attacker. I don't really know how I feel about that, a ground attacker being sort of the similar battle rating to the fighters. But um, I, I do believe anyway that the MiG-21 SMT and MF should move up a little bit. I'll talk about that one a little bit later. So... Our next changes are the F-104s. Now, the F-104C and the F-104As are going down. This is a classic Gaijin's double fixing. What they tend to do is they tend to not take into account the changes that might be affecting other aircraft. And as a result, everything is dealt with in isolation. And when it's dealt with in isolation, you don't really get a good picture for the holistic battle rating. And when you don't do that, you end up creating very, very wonky pieces of balance like this. Now, the F-104S, uh, sorry, the F-104Gs uh, and the F-104Cs and the F-104As are sort of all deserving of that sort of 10.0 and 10.7 battle rating. More so, the F-104Cs should be sort of that 9.7, 10.0 area, simply because they're so fast. Now, if you were to put a 9.3 with an 8.3, you would end up with some severe problems. Already at 9.0, you have serious issues, and 8.7, you have serious issues where an F-104A or an F-104C can literally just play passively the whole game and get away with it. And this is a real detriment to the gameplay. The only thing that really stops you is the R-60s, and you have to get within 3 kilometers. and if the F-104 plays its cards correctly, keeping itself at a, above Mark 1 and at decent altitude, it can very easily get away from R-60s if the, if the enemy player uses it too liberally. So you can find that there are issues when you come to face things like the F-104s. I think the F-104s deserve that higher battle rating, and perhaps these are the one plane that uh, is a little bit unfit for the matchmaker in general. Maybe there are some planes that just cannot exist properly in War Thunder, and maybe the F-104s are one of those aircraft. Now, the uh, F-104S TAF and the F-104S for Italy are all going up. They're going up from 10.7 to 11.0. And uh, another classic example of a double fix is the J35D going from 10.7 to 10.3. Now, I strongly disagree with it because this is a really quick plane. At sea level, you can breach 1,400 kilometers per hour. And of course, you have four 9Js and you have some of the best turning in the game. Of course, you do lack that energy retention in a turn, but that's the double-edged sword that you use when you play with this plane. Now, I see the J35D as completely inferior to the J35XS in the premium tree simply because the J35XS has one thing, flares, that the J35D simply does not. So having that ability to mitigate missiles that are really, really powerful gives you a bit more freedom. And I do see a, a case for the J35D being lower than the J35XS, but I think that they should for now be the same battle rating because we don't really have the infinite amount of battle ratings to sort of differentiate such minute differences as flares. Even though flares are a decent difference, in this particular matchmaker, I don't actually think we have the space for this type of thing. So having the J35D at 10.7, we'll throw it down, uh, we'll, we's keep it facing 9.7s, and 9.7s already struggle, but then you're gonna throw it down at nine point, uh, against 9.3s, things like the F86K, things like the MiG-19, and like, whilst I think the MiG-19 is perfectly capable, other 9.3s like the Shenyang F5, the uh, Super Sabres, are starting to get into that realm of not really playable. So you are, once again, Gaijin, double fixing the J35D. And here we go again, it should be at 10.7. Now, 
Moving down a little bit, we're going to have a look at the Panther. The F9 F-2 is going from 8.3 to 8.0. And 8.0, I think, is fine. In fact, I think that the F9 F-2 could probably be at 7.7 .7 and have few issues. The main issue at this battle rating is the SU-11, and the SU-11 is nowhere to be seen on this list. It should be 7.7, .7, plain and simple. The SU-11 is absolutely ruining this tier, and much like the SU-25K, I believe to be nothing more than a scummy cash grab. The SU-25 uh, Frogfoots should also go up from 9.7 to 10.0. These planes are a ground attacker. They should not be dominating air battles like an air battle or like a like an air superiority fighter. Not only that, but they also choke up the matchmaker with the R60Ms. These are all aspect very very powerful high uh, high G limit uh, missiles, and these are just missiles that are very very easy kills to subsonic planes that haven't got flares. Any saber any MIG, anything that is, you know, un incapable of flying above 1200 kilometers per hour, and even planes that can, uh, they just simply are not capable of getting out of the way of an R60. And oftentimes, you are just not going to be able to use your flight performance to just get above them or get around them. And I think that despite having that sort of limitation of being subsonic and a bit obese, the Su-25s should really be facing jets that are a little bit higher in calibre, simply because their primary role is not to attack air targets, but to attack ground targets. This will also give fighters around this tier a little bit more breathing room, particularly the 8.7s. The 8.7s rely on dogfighting, and they actually do come to a lower speed in some cases than the, uh, than the 9.7 Su-25s. I genuinely think that the power that the SU-25 has is too much, and having the issues of these really powerful missiles at such a low battle rating throws out the balance overall, and you end up with double fixes like you get with a J-35, uh, and of course the uh, the other ones, the F-104s. So I'm pretty sure these two planes are both victims of the SU-25 because they don't have flares, and they rely on being able to cut in and come in nice and close, especially the F-104s. But these planes are obviously being double fixed, and I have a bit of a problem with that. Now, our last few changes are props. Now, I don't really cover props a lot, and I really should. Um, but the F4 UB, which honestly I've never played, I can't really comment on it, uh, is going down in battle rating from 6.0 to 5.7. And the Seafire FR47, which I have played a lot, is going up in battle rating, which I just don't understand. I see the Seafire FR47 as the number one turd in props RB. I just do not like the plane. I think it should be much, much lower than it actually is. I would actually rate the MB5 higher than I would the FR47, and I genuinely dislike the MB5 in RB. I know the SB guys really have fun with the MB5, but I'm not a sim player, and for those of you that do, I honestly congratulate you because I don't know how you do it. Now, the other changes here are fairly benign. The uh, F, uh, Focke Wolf 190A4 going down to 4.0 from 4.3, same as the A5U2, 4.0, the B18B going up to 4.0 from 3.7, and the Heinkel 100D going down to, to uh, 1.7 from 2.1. Now, the Heinkel 100, I've actually played extensively, and I really like the plane. I think it's a cool concept. I think it's got an interesting uh, sort of gameplay element to it, where if you are hit once, you're pretty much dead. But you can pretty much fight with impunity, particularly biplanes. And you tend to get the small maps where you do really, really well, and you can store energy very quickly. Now, I do like the Heinkel 100D, um, but I'm not sure that 1.7 is a good spot for it. We'll have to see with the coming gameplay. Now... The planes that have been missed in this list, of course, I do think to the uh, F-14A should be moved up in battle rating. I also think that JA-37C should be moved to 11.3. The F-4J is at 11.3, and the F-4J does pretty much perfectly as it is. Uh, I do think that that plane should go up in battle rating. I also think the A-10A late and the A-10A early should also go up in battle rating to meet these expectations. I also think the SU-25 uh, should, as stated earlier, uh, and most importantly, I think the A-5C should also go up. It is a ground attacker first and foremost, and should be treated as such. The Matra Magics that is equipped with at 10.0 are nothing short of broken, and I think that that should be changed immediately. The other planes that uh, are kind of, sort of, where they are appropriately, let's, let's talk about some that were left out as well. The Mirage F-1C and the CT, I think they're fine, sitting at 11.3. A lot of people do give them a lot of credit, 
uh, but I do think the Mirage 2000C should go to 11.7. I just think it is just that little bit strong. Of course, it doesn't have the missile capacity that some of the others have at this tier. It only gets four as opposed to six, but the flight performance has been buffed recently. There's a video coming out on it very soon. You might even see gameplay in the background, but it's a pretty damn good plane, and I really think it should be 11.7. So ladies and gentlemen, these are some small changes that we have experienced here with the extra decompression. This is an excellent first step, but of course we have plenty more to go. There are several planes that just simply do not belong at the battle ratings they belong at. MiG-21 MF, it should be around the 10.7 mark. I think fighting 9.3s is unfair, uh, as do I think about the MiG-19s. I think these planes are very, very strong gunfighters, but I don't believe that they should be fighting 8.3s. I think it's simply unfair. Planes like the GAC-38M, 9.7 is a little bit dubious, but you know what? I think we can let it slide for this once. And I think the GAC-38, the regular one, um, which I don't have at the moment, uh, I believe that was a 9.3. But if it's 9.7 as well, I don't really have a problem. These are overall very, very positive changes, and I really like to see that a little bit of decompression coming to War Thunder. I think, however, the place that needs decompression the most is that tier around the Frogfoots and the 810s. I think it was a sorely destroyed battle rating, and it had such a beautiful ecosystem, starting with the English Electric Lightning being moved down from 9.7 to 9.3, and then, of course, the MiG-19s, and so on and so forth. All these planes constantly being squeezed out of the matchmaker made it a really, really frustrating matchmaker to play. A lot of the time you didn't have the countermeasures and a lot of these planes just simply suck. Most of these planes really don't belong at the battle ratings that they belong at, around that 9.7 to 10.0 mark. Uh, and oftentimes you end up with planes that are just vastly superior at a mysteriously lower battle rating what for, for nothing more than what seems to be profit margins. Now, these are inevitable, but you know, some might say that Gaijin has to make some money and you would be right in that cir circumstance, but I think that they're destroying the health of the game long term. And this is something that we need to as players consider because at the end of the day, we're playing this game, you know, maybe three times a week, four times a week, daily for five, six hours, who knows? Doesn't matter what you play. At the end of the day, we all want to enjoy a very balanced matchmaker. And we don't really want to be rooting for one team or one other team, because at the end of the day, once you're finished with your tech tree, you're going to move on to something else, unless you're an absolute fanboy. And in that case, I've got no hope for you. But there are certain aircraft that just need to be moved up because they're just destroying matchmakers. The SU-11 is a perfect example. There is pretty much no other way to counter it without the F-84G. And even so, you are going to struggle quite a lot. Maybe the C-Meteor will uh, give you a little bit more solace. But at the same time, these are equals almost. And they sit at 7.3 and 7.7. .7. There are plenty of aircraft that can counter these aircraft, but it just needs to be played so ridiculously uh, sparingly that it becomes ridiculous for the sort of level of effort that you put into versus the level of effort that your enemy needs to put into to send you packing straight to the hangar. So ladies and gentlemen, whilst this is an excellent first step, I still think that there is a little bit of a way to go. War Thunder is an excellent game, and we are making very, very good steps, or at least Gaijin is here, but there are some things that Gaijin just never learns from, such as that double fixing, and of course, the uh, keeping those premiums at a super low battle rating. I don't really understand it, but ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today. We are working on some really, really lovely changes, or at least we're, we're working towards or, or experiencing at the very least, some really, really lovely changes, and it is really, really nice to see this. But um, I'd just like to also thank you all for your constant support of the channel. I've been able to purchase a 4090, and over the next few days, um, I will be sort of uploading content that has been recorded on the 4090, uh, so you get some nice juicy 4K footage. I do at the moment have an issue with my power supply. I think it might be a busted capacitor that's resulting in some sort of uh, really loud electrical buzzing when the sort of whole system uses more than about 400 watts which is the 5950x with you know precision boost overdrive so it's drawing at uh, full pelt 250 watts and the gpu can draw up to 450 watts so i can't really have that it does trip the ocp the overcurrent protection um, so i will be returning that you might actually find a bit of a blip in the in the content i hope to to avoid that as much as possible so over the next few days you might see some pre-recorded content that might be with old battle ratings might be with old changes 
or it might be with uh, some things that haven't been updated. So just stay nice and patient. But I greatly thank you for your support, and I also thank you so much for that patience. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you also so much for watching. I greatly appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.